flexing, rolling through the SWAT. Reppin' for the city, hear him in the parking lot. Houston written across the jersey, ain't gon' never stop. Just fans got me tuning in, waiting for the drop. Astro Texas Rockets, Dynamo, they coming with it. When they pull up, got the city sitting on a fitted. Straight up, A Leaf, hold it down, they gon' never quit it. Just fans got me tuning in, let yeah. my dogs get it. Southwest A Leaf, Texas, throw down here when it's so infectious. We ride for the Houston Astros, Rockets, Dynamo, and them Texans. How's it going, everybody? It's Carlos, your host of the Just Fans podcast, and I'm joined here, of course, by my most loyal co-host who shows up all the time, no matter if he's drunk or sober, Rios. Let him know what's up, bud. Dude, I'm exhausted, man. I got, I got up work. <laughs> so I was supposed to get off at 4.30. I got off at 7. I'm exhausted, man. <laughs> but hey, this, man. Is, this, is, this is giving me life, so. There you go. That's how you do it, man. It's, it's nothing better than have a cold one after, after, uh, after a long day's work, brother. That's how it is. Uh, and today we got a special guest, man. Uh, this guy, uh, he's he's I'm telling you, one of these days that we're gonna see him in that Astros uniform playing down at Minute Maid Park. We got the one and only Colton Gordon in the house. How's it going, Colton? What's up, guys? Man, happy to be here, happy to be on the show. Glad to be here, man. Hey, man, thanks. Thank you for, for coming on, brother. Uh, yes, so, dude, uh, I was talking to you a little bit off air, and uh, I mentioned so, uh, I follow you on, on Instagram and I saw a lot of posts uh, of you uh, just about recently, really, um, of you in like the Dominican Republic, and there was like pictures of you just like exhausted, looking like Rios over here, all exhausted, but putting in the work, you know. So yeah. tell us, tell us a little bit. How was the experience of the Dominican Republic, bro? Man, the DR was unreal. I I was talking, like you said, I was talking to you off air, but my my cousin got married there this off season, so was down there and while I was down. Holy Predis, my Tim. Teammate in AAA was like, man, you got to come see what we do, how we do it, like the way we live, how the lifestyle is. And it was a blast. And and part of that was getting out to that field playing catch and went through some of his workouts. And, man, they got you running back and forth and, and uh, just nonstop for a good little 20, 30 minutes of conditioning. And it, it wears you out. And you're down there. And that, but it was a blast. You got to go to the beach with him and and hit the beach work out and, and just see what the dr was like from their perspective and it was it was awesome that's awesome yeah. how much different how much different is the training over there than like what you normally train here like i'd say i'd say it's not too different i'd, I'd say the circumstances are different right i mean it's just it's everything to me from from being from florida where i'm from like a lot of guys are walking to the field and it's it's like uh they're working out on the beach just barefoot running in the sand and, and some of it's simpler but like just doing it at the rate they're doing it nonstop, mm -hmm. then they hard. So it's kind of like simple, but also, uh, I mean, you can't, sometimes you can't be hard and simple at the same time as far as just hard work, fast, intense, but all you're doing is running on sand or, or going back and forth on the field. Yeah, that, uh, that life is a lot different than what, than what we're accustomed, huh? It's, it's just like you said, running barefoot in the sand. I mean, yeah. I, I imagine try doing that in Galveston. Exactly. <laughs> you'll, catch, you'll catch some type of infection in Galveston. <laughs> My foot. Yeah, the last bottle. Zombie, zombie apocalypse starts. <laughs> Staying in the chair right here, just enjoying the scenery. Instead, we're actually like, this is just where they go every day, which is oh, awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That is amazing. That's awesome. So I got to tell you, what kind of uh, – what was your favorite type of uh, meal that you got over there in, uh, in the DR? Some plant, some good plantains. And we yeah. had some plantains. Got to have it simple. And then we had some, man, he, he lives on, he lives on the beach over there. So we actually grilled out some lobster one night. That he, Ooh. And unbelievable. I'm telling you, like, uh, from a Florida, from a Florida kid loving seafood, it was like, it was badass, man. It was so good. It, it was, was different. Different. Just unbelievable. Fresh, right on the grill. Little butter in a pan, perfect. Ooh, exactly. <laughs> hey, now I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. This weekend. Now. <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> By normal day night, he's like, "This is just what we do. This is what we do." I'm like, "Yeah, Jeez. love it." Damn. Yeah, great. Now this weekend, babe, we're getting lobster this weekend. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to Galveston. We're going fishing. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Lobster, then diaper for some reason. <laughs> the lobster has three eyes. Yeah, <laughs> like, the like the Simpsons fish or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. 
Oh, like, why awesome. is the lobster green? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's evolving. Shut up. <laughs> no, man, that's awesome. So, uh, so how has your experience been uh, right now? With like, what are your expectations coming into this upcoming season, man? Do you uh, see yourself like up going to the next level to the majors, or or do you yeah. think, hey, we got some? But like, no doubt. I mean, I think uh, take it one day at a time. This offseason has been really good. Got to travel a little bit and enjoy that and, and just trying to get better. Uh, this offseason, get a little stronger, kind of make the pitches a little sharper, get a little more consistent mechanics. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, simply the goal is to debut and, and be there and help out the team as much as possible. But it all starts with me just what I can, which is just getting better and and pitching well and let everything else kind of take care of itself when that happens. And yeah. I'm looking forward to being there, man. We have a great team, great club, oh, yeah. and a lot of the guys being in Sugarland, and I look forward to it. Whenever that time comes, man, I'm ready. I'm, I want to be there, and I'm, I'm stoked to do it. So, yeah, uh, honestly, I, I see, I, I can see that happening, dude. You, it, it seems, you know, from your, from your stats or what. I was like, wow, this, is, you know, you got some pretty decent stats. I, I could see it happening. And right now, you know, you're at a. We saw a lot uh, today. A lot of the arbitration, the, uh, the news, you know, the. Uh, the players, you know, that were back that didn't go to arbitration, which was great. And then, uh, I mean, you still, you know, we love our Astros, obviously, but, you know, there are some, there are some needs in the, especially in the pitching, uh, in pitching that they need. So, man, anytime, I'm, I'm sure you might, you might get the call, you know, and I hope, and I hope you do, brother. Right. Yes. And, you know, like, like you said, like I said, I take it one day at a time and, and yeah. Up. And and got a lot of friends up there too. And it should be a great year. I'm looking for 2024 should be a good year all around. Oh, yeah. And we're, we're we're looking forward to just I'm looking forward to just enjoying it and doing the best I can every day and letting it take care of itself. I'm telling you, man, and, and what you were telling us right now, how you were working on 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 your mechanics and and, and all that stuff that you were telling us, dude. That th this is one of those things where I think every year, like, do you see that? Do you feel like this year you've made uh, more adjustments that you have in previous years and working towards owning your craft, or how do you how would you describe this year being different from previous years? Just my first. For me in pro ball, it's just my first healthy off season. So I mean that's, mm -hmm. that's like, like to an entirety of itself. But I mean specifically, mm -hmm. just like understanding the level that I finished at, which is AAA, and knowing that like it's just about fine tuning, like making sure that some details are better. Like you said, like uh, like I mentioned the mechanics, just like what specifically in that, and working on of a handful of categories, and then uh, letting everything else try to take care of itself. Just going out there and competing and trying to win and help wherever I'm at, helping that team win and, and go from there. Yeah, definitely. Is there, is there a game? Like I, I saw there was some games that you had like what nine strikeouts and like, or, 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 or something like that in, in the game or something like that just back to back. I was like, God, is there a game that sticks out to you in your head that you're like, that's the game that I know for sure. Like I just complete balled out that, you know, for sure that you like, you left and you're like, this is a game that I want people to define me from. Do you have oh. any of those? I don't know if I've had it yet. I don't know. Okay. I'll tell you what. I I know that sounds – every time I pitch in the game, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, man, personally, this time, like, could have done better here, could have done better here. Look, granted, those 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 games, you do really well, you're like – you go home that day and you're happy. You're like, let's go. Yeah. Okay. But to, in, in the moment of it going to the next week, you're like, all right, got to get better for next week and the week after that. And, uh, you know, maybe one day, a long time from now, hopefully I'll look back and be like, nah, that game was the things like that. But as far as right now, I'm just still focused on just trying to get better every day. And I haven't even thought about it. Hopefully, like I said, that game's – I haven't played that game yet, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely, nice. man. So, yeah. right, as a pitcher, what's your favorite pitch to throw, man? I love my fastball. I throw it 90-92, and I'm like, let's go. Left-handed. There you go. Got, like, fired in there. And I'm not a guy that throws – Crazy hard triple digits, but I, I have really good confidence in the, the way it moves and the way I throw it and kind of my perception of velocity, basically. And I, I love it. Just like, let's go. What, what do you got? My best pitch versus what you're hopefully putting your best swing on, and let's see what yeah. we got. Nice. I think that's the best part about baseball. Like, you see it, and it's like a straight-up challenge. Like, I got I got something. You got something for me. Let's like It's like settle it right on the – The hitter versus me, and let's see what you got one yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, exactly. we got Granky out there at one point throwing a ball like at 47 miles an hour, and he still struck the guy out. So <laughs> it's all about velocity. It's all about spin rate and just technique. No doubt. No doubt. So yeah. that, how the ball moves, how you're able to throw it, and, and how, how you know how to get that hitter out. 
Yeah, that's all it is. Like I've seen Maldi. Like I don't think he was in the. I, I remember they put him as a pitcher once. Uh, not for oh, like, I, I do. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah and do like he, you know he got a strike on one of those. I'm like, dude, <laughs> and he was throwing like seventy or whatever it was. And, and, and like it's all about the technique, right? It, it's all. It, it doesn't. It really doesn't matter at times what hey. the velocity yeah, is. Maldi hasn't spared a Babe Ruth hitter and pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. How? Right. Um, so okay, so. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying he's a good dude. Maldi's a really good guy. Oh, man. How was your experience there. with Maldi? First of all, I was going to ask you, how, how was your experience with Maldi? Man, I, I haven't talked to him too much. I, I was cool. I interacted with him a little bit going uh, through the World Baseball Classic, honestly, more yeah. when we got down there, and, and that was pretty cool. And just a really good guy. I mean, the, all those guys are just easy to talk to, go up to, approach, just talk about, you know, baseball, what's going on, what they're working on, what we're working on, especially from the catcher standpoint. And, or just say hey, and so um, I haven't interacted too much, obviously, and but just easy, easy to get along with, easy to talk to, and that's the, that's the biggest, that's the nicest thing I should say is that like you know that guy's accomplished a lot, that guy's a yeah. big time, big time big leaguer, and for them to kind of especially a couple of previous years be easy to go up to in spring training and just communicate with is awesome. Yeah, no, I bet, dude. Uh, it was like uh, I was telling Reels, you know, we were we respect like the. The, the you know for the years that he was here what let what Maldi left behind like a lot of people I feel like uh we, is I, I feel like it's underrated like his baseball IQ his uh, uh, up here it's just top notch so much it makes makes a pitcher's life way easier when you can trust that catcher knowing that he he's aware of what you're trying to do and has mm-hmm. a game with you on you know how we're gonna get this batter out and you can really rely on him to to be to have his thoughts and awareness behind what he's calling you not just putting down a pitch, right? That makes a big difference. A lot of stress off our backs almost. Like, okay, like, clearly Maldi knows what's going on. If he wants a fastball, okay. If I don't want a fastball, I got to think about really why not. Because obviously he knows why. So things like that. It's cool. Really good. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Uh, it, 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 like you said, it, it, I'm sure it's very helpful. Like it, it helps you kind of relax too while you're on the while you're on the pitches mount too. Like okay, we're we're communicating and no all doubt. that. Yeah. Have you ever had like and, I, and don't, you don't have to name them right there. Have you ever had a, a a catcher like where you're just like you're just completely not in sync? You're like what? I'm confused at what you're asking me to do. How does that experience if, if you've had that before? Take no name names. Really. Yeah, I'm taking it back to college. Back to college before before pro ball I was at a. Uh, I was at a junior college and I, I transferred from Florida. Long, long story short is I showed up and we had a game within like three weeks. And like, we just didn't even, we barely had three weeks to, to be on the team playing with each other. Like, all right, well, I know you, but I don't really know you. So yeah. it was, we, uh, it was more funny than anything. It was like, all right, we got to laugh at, like, laughed a lot and got to know what I was trying to do, what they were trying to do. And it all worked out. But, um, it's it's just a lot of uh, communicating. Just being, like, hey man, I'm trying to. We're, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. Like, but in baseball, at the end of the day, we're all trying to win. We're all on the same team. Everyone's trying to help each other. How can you help me? How can I help you? How can we all make this work to at the end of the day accomplish a bigger goal, which is just one of the, one of the game and one of the bunch of games in, in the entirety of a season. So, yeah, no, exactly. Um, I was going to ask you. You mentioned the, uh, the the WBC. I believe if I'm, uh, you went for Team Israel, is that? I mean, you were part of Team Israel, right? Um, so, how was that? Uh, was this your first one, or had you gone? This was your was this your first one, or you gone? Yeah. So that was, that how was, was how was that experience representing Team Israel? Awesome. I, I think it'll help me so much going forward. It was first of all that was for me personally, but to represent Israel, being just being Jewish and representing them was awesome. But personally, to go into my career going forward. To pitch in a stadium in spring training last year with sold out playing Puerto Rico with that kind of loud noise and 65 yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, man, I talk about a playoff atmosphere. Like, yeah. I mean, guys walking around the locker room that have been there before was like, man, this, mm-hmm. this is like bigger than the World Series. And, and for me to be there, knowing where I want to be going forward and how I want to help the Astros, that's a huge kind of kind of little piece that I'm gonna take with me and be like, okay, I've done that, I've been there. I've seen it. I felt it. My outing. I wanted to do better result wise, no doubt. But to help me in my career was awesome. But to to just see that environment was unbelievable. So um, at that, I think on one, uh, um, uh, I think you pro- you probably didn't get the results you expected on that on on 
on that. Uh, I think there was a point. I don't want to bring it up because I want to. I think right. you're like allowed like four runs or something like that at one point. How how do you come back from like? How do you prepare yourself mentally to be like, okay, I need to move on or whatever to the to the next stage or whatever. Like whenever things don't go your way, how do you how do you mentally prepare for that? Yeah, I mean, you you what you prepare to do is the the best you can, and I mean mm-hmm. that the mental physical, however it may be, like hey, but you want to put your best self out there when you pitch. I'll speak for all people beyond me, but specifically to me, going after that outing, like you, I was super, super disappointed, but also upset, frustrated. I mean, look, like you don't go out there to have that performance. But at the same time, you know, time passes, you get in the season, right? You get going to with well, I was with Corpus to start, and yeah. uh, you kind of take that as a like almost like I'm saying now, like a, a learning experience, and I'm going to take away what I learned from that, and 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 pitching execution and feeling that environment and where I was at uh, and knowing next time it's going to be better because of that, because I've been there, done that. I've felt it. I've been in the, in a playoff atmosphere. And this next time when I'm there, I know, I know things are going to happen that I didn't know before or what things feel like, like, and it's, and you, Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, hold on, one, more, one more. Sorry, Cole. I think you went off a little bit. Can you say something again? I think you went off on. I think you're talking, but then like it, it uh, goes on and off. Hold on. Yeah. All right. How, uh, are you able to log back out and then log back in again using the same link? Yeah, I can't hear you at all. You can't hear me. Okay. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to type it in the chat. One second. Technology. Modern wonders or modern blunders? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, hold on. Can you log on? Oh, well, he's not. Okay, it says device not connected. Okay, I'm sure he'll get. Uh, he'll get back on. Dude, this uh, isn't that awesome. Like, oh, there he is. Okay, here. Hey, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you now. I got you. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Go. So if it hap- yeah, I guess if it happens, uh, it's it's it, uh, if it happens, just you can always log back out and come back in. I think that's. Okay. Yeah, I just like exited that. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm sorry. You were you were talking about like dealing with that situation or whatnot, like when you're up there and like it doesn't go your way. So how do you like mentally prepare? Yeah, for, like, yeah. I think it's really as simple as like, I mean, you allow yourself to be upset by it for a little bit because at the end of the day, it matters. And I didn't want to go out there and pitch bad, but after the fact, you can't change it. And so long term, you take away what you can and learn from it and know. The next time, because of that, I am going to be better because of I've been there before. That I mean, next time I throw in the WBC for Team Israel, it won't be my first time. It won't be my – like if I pitch for the Astros, when I, when I debut for the Astros, it won't be my first time in a sold-out stadium. It won't be my first time in a big league stadium on that on any kind of stadium. Like I'll have felt that before, and that's, from a personal standpoint, a big positive. As far as that year with yeah. Team obviously we had higher standards as a group. And that's probably the that's probably the bigger frustration. It's not a personal how I didn't do good, but kind of kind of letting down the team mm-hmm. around you where like, hey, we're all we're all working towards a bigger goal. And that's and that's the part you kinda of get over as time goes and you learn what you can and then you move on and you you know the next time around gonna be better because of it. And that's you leave it at that. That's how I kind of look at it. There you go. I think uh, at the end of the day, it feels like uh, no matter what you do, you're like your own worst critic, you know? <laughs> and so it's like yeah. 100%. I mean, that's me. Always. That's me to a T. I'm, I'm sure that's a lot of to a T. I mean, I'm by far my own worst credit. <laughs> where sometimes it's like I need to just stop, like relax, yeah. like go, go sit outside for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like like I get it. Like we're real. Like our careers. Like uh, obviously, this is what we do professionally, right? Obviously, this is just us. So I know Real's like he uh, his job. He's a salesman. So right. Carson, so I'm sure he's got a hone his crap. He's got his pitches. He's got you know, whatever he has to do me, I teach kids. So I have to every day go in and plan what I'm going to say and how to say, because if I say something wrong, it can't, you know, I, I'm not able to, you know, the kid's going to be confused or whatever. Right. So right. It's, it's all about that. But I, I feel it in that sense. And of course, I'm nowhere comparing my profession to what you do, yeah. but yeah. in the sense of like, you know, you, are your you, make, you make a mistake, you, know, you kind of dwell on it a little bit, but you're like, you know what, hey, you know, one, you know, for me, for example, one customer, Talk to the next one. Fix what I made a mistake. I made another one, and don't repeat the same mistake. Yeah. 
that's and you know what and you you hope to get to a certain point in baseball right to where like you get consistent enough to the mistakes become so little to where that's where you become really really good at anything yes right if you're your parent teaching and your jobs or whatever whatever you may have going on so yeah no no doubt um so uh, you mentioned, you know, I, I, I got to, you know, and I, I've played for fun baseball, right? Like not nothing, nothing right. nowhere near you guys. So my, my thing is like, I can't even begin to imagine how much you've, you've, you've said, you know, you've, you've gone through the pressure of like, you know, like the playoff atmosphere and things like that. When you went to the WBC and played with some of the best guys there, like, can you walk us through like when you're during a game and let's say game games on the line, you happen to be that guy that's pitching, dude, how, how intense is that pressure in your head? How do you block out that noise just when you're on that mound and you're just focusing on that particular pitch or whatnot? How walk us through I, that moment? Yeah, I, I think you just focused on like the task at hand, as, as simple mm -hmm. as that sounds. Like, uh, you know, who you're facing as far as whoever the batter is. I know what I'm really good at. I hopefully have an idea of what he's not so good at to a certain extent, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to execute whatever pitches called to the best of my ability and, and that and that's that and and control what you can and I think it takes practice I think I practice it a lot like whether I'm working out or playing catch or in the, especially this offseason throwing bullpens as I start to ramp back up here for spring training like uh you kind of just try to run yourself through that a little bit and take experiences like you said from from places I've been and games I've played in and, and, and that's how you do it and you you uh in the moment, you just really – what can I control? In that moment, frankly, like, I can control throwing the best pitch that is called for me, and that's like it. And so, for me, I know a couple of things about how my body works. So, just take a deep breath and allow that to happen. And then, you know, you put everything you can into that pitch. And if you execute it right, knowing that I, that I feel confident enough that I'm better at doing that, good results happen, whether it's a swing and miss, ground ball for an out, Pop fire for an out. You just get the guy out and you move on. Nice. So going back, going back to the, going back to the WBC. Uh, what was your favorite memory from that? Man, it was fun. Just like just meet, meeting people. I mean, just 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 uh, Maldi was one. Met Maldi. Met uh, man. I mean, I, I I obviously know Pena just from the Astros, but just seeing him around that he was met 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 John Cabrera. Met. Oh man, legends! I mean, uh, Javi Baez, talk, met oh, man. and what met him, and, and just guys that like guys that have been around doing it, right? I mean, I ho hopefully I'm there doing it, surrounded by these guys very soon. But to be able to experience that maybe a year before I was going to, to just have their experience, say hi to them. David Ortiz was David Ooh. Ortiz was awesome. Oh, I guys. So oh. He's I would have fangirl with with Ortiz, man. I would have fangirl. <laughs> yeah, I was say, how do you? Big poppy, hilarious, man, and, and just to to be there in it and 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 soak that up, especially looking back on it, is is so cool. Because hopefully, I'm playing against a lot of these guys really soon. So yeah. It's, but it, it's it was so cool. It was so they got they got a the cool thing is they have a like in the tunnel in Miami in the stadium they have like a barber shop in there, it, it, like the little. What? So sick, and so uh, a lot of these guys was, were in there getting a haircut before, like the day before the series started. We had a little practice on the field in there, and uh, while I was like, "Oh, what up? What up?" Saw Pena in there, so what up? Got the that's where I met David in there, and uh, it was it was awesome, dude. That the fact yeah. that you said there's a bar there's a barber shop in there just like blew my mind right now. <laughs> but what's right? funny is that it, it, like you told me like you met Pena, you met all these, and the first thing I felt is my ADD was like. They have a barber shop in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my, when I walked by. I, I did a double take. I was like, "Damn!" Have you ever seen Crazy. that before? Like in a stadium, like barber shop? Was that first time? First time for sure. Now, wow. That's I promise you. That's not a double A. The double A haircut station <laughs> chair in front of the sink, and then like your friend <laughs> get up the right way. And then hey, you gotta save up. Anything to say right. up a dollar, bro? Like <laughs> reminds me of those those COVID haircuts. Yes, your brother, you know, cutting your hair in front of the mirror. <laughs> Cut me like, all right, all right, we're good, we're good, cool. Kind of rock with that. That was those were those were fun this year. Had a couple of those. Yeah. Oh man. So uh, that it seems like, dude, like you're like th those are amazing experiences with the WBC and and all that, and the fact that you got to meet some you know some few people. Uh, 
one of one of the guys that I know that was in uh, the thing was let not let go. I'm sorry, he was in Corey Lee. Uh, a uh, great guy. He went to Chicago, right? With a, like they did like a trade for Verlander. How were you guys? Uh, were you guys pretty close? As I know, he was one of the catchers. Or were you guys pretty close uh, over there in Triple A or no? No, he uh, he was a little he was a little before me. He uh, yeah. I didn't meet him too much. He was cool. I met Channing, good dude, awesome. Yeah. Uh, he was. I think he was part of a different deal than Verlander. But uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh-huh. No, no, but yeah, but he. Uh, I'm trying to think about how many. I haven't. I really didn't really get to meet him too much. So no, he never caught mm-hmm. me. I know I talked to him a handful of times. Good dude, but um, yeah, I know he's a really nice guy. I would doubt there. I'd actually doubt the Chipotle. Probably, I'm thinking about how long it was after. I think maybe the week after he died. Oh wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So it's right after. Gotcha. Who has who has been? So I know you told us about Big Poppy. Uh, you met him there in, in in WBC. Who has been like the one baseball player that just kind of like starstruck you a little bit? Oh man, I don't know. Let me let me think about that for a second. Give yeah. me a. Um, well, you were like this guy here. Like I got to take a picture. I got to get something from this guy. I'll go, you know? I'll go back to when I was a kid growing up. I think Carl Crawford. I grew up. I, I live probably 15 minutes from Tropicana Field in Florida. Oh, uh-huh. So I would go to a ton of Rays games growing up. So I said the the one guy that was like Carl Crawford was legit, and him and David Price were two guys that like I remember getting their autograph growing up and being like, wow all right, this is, that was cool. And uh, those are probably two guys I'd say that I was really like, wow. Like growing up as a kid, just because of what they did for the Rays and what they meant for the Rays. And yeah. I was in the 2000, like the, the 2006 to 2008 to where they were really, really bad and then transitioned into a team that made it to the World Series. It was pretty cool. So uh, there we go. That makes sense. So you grew up, uh, obviously growing up there, you grew up a Rays fan, like you said, right? You were a big Rays fan. Yeah, no doubt, but obviously an Astros fan now. I mean, I'm yeah. all yeah. I'm a let's go for, for yeah. get, get that right at that point. It's like nah, nah. I'm I'm riding riding or dying with my team right here. <laughs> right, it's we're, 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 <laughs> yeah, like bury me in the H now. No, yeah, right. <laughs> no but I grew up, I grew up literally right around the corner. So it was it, yeah. just cool being able to go to the, go to school and go to the, a game mid middle of the week, which was awesome. So uh, I want to guide. So you know, you mentioned that you know you're you're with the Astros now and stuff like that. So how can you guide us through that moment? You you got you know you were chosen to go to the Astros. How did that feel? That was, moment when you I was I was I was stoked. I was I was with my family. Uh, I wasn't sure. I'll be I'll, I'll be honest. I wasn't sure I was going to the Astros. I was sitting there mm-hmm. going, man, it could be this team. It could be this team. And and the Astros called, and I was I was so excited and. Uh, Man, looking back on it now, I'm, I'm I'm really lucky it was the Astros too because of how much they've helped me come through TJ and the recovery process of that, and uh, just learning learning how to become a better pitcher, right? I mean, teaching me from the analytical standpoint of how good they do at developing guys and stuff like that, and uh, we're here. But running through that draft day, I, I was in a, I was in a brace right off of TJ. I was mm-hmm. sitting there with uh, with with my dad and uh, walking forth and I had the, the computer up and phone rings and uh literally a phone rang the next thing the next pick was me to the Astros in the eighth round and uh I was it was it was the be- a dream a dream come true and the beginning of another dream at the same time it was a pretty pretty wild pretty wild awesome day super yeah, that's awesome that's how you do it man that, yeah we've heard some some draft stories uh here and there and we always like hearing draft stories we've had a few other players yeah. not not necessarily like astros players or or, or anything like that, but we've had like nfl players that go, told us some some stories also so i always love hearing like the draft stories because i'm like but coach well, Stamps, was, that's the best draft story ever yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I think my, my big my big my big draft story was just really the uncertainty i mean i seriously going into the draft it was like I don't know what's going to happen. And so when the call yeah. came, it was just like, like, damn, it happened. It was, it was really excitement and joy. Cause I was, it was just like, wow. All right, here we go. Did, did it sink in like immediately or, or did it just progressively through the next couple of days? You're like, you really have to like, Oh, it, it finally hits you or something like that. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a probably a day. It's a probably yeah. a night and the next day. And I think, uh, I was re- like literally the beginning of my TJ program in a brace and, 
I was like, man, like we're, we're doing it. And I wasn't sure. I knew, I knew I was in a place somewhere. I just wasn't sure where and when it happened. It was pure just joy, the fact that I had an opportunity to do it. And then the next day, kind of sat in like, all right, like we're going to Ace Town. Like, like, Is it? Yeah. We're going to Houston. Like, yeah. oh, like not. Nah, like, you? Had you ever been uh, before that? Have you ever had you ever like stepped foot in Houston before? Or was that your one, first? One, one time growing up, my dad had a little work trip there. Went with him uh, to Houston one time, and I didn't even get a chance to see like the whole. Uh, you know where I was? I was down at uh, the the trade. Where, where did all the trade shows go? What's that building called? Oh, uh, George Brown Convention Center. George Brown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally right there. And so. I was right around that area. I, I remember there was a soccer game one night. We walked by. It. I know that's right in that that yeah, area. Right around there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, By Dynamo. I was there for like a week, came back, the only time there, and then boom, there we go. Right back to Houston that yeah. day. When I got drafted, I was like, all right, we're going back. And going back. And that and it was awesome. Got to Sugarland this year and spent some time obviously in Sugarland or right outside of there in Houston. And I love it. I mean, I love Houston. It's just I I want to get there and stay there. That's I'm telling you, yeah, it's it, it'd be great to see you up in that uniform, brother. Like seriously, it, it it'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, so what's so you know you're 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 in the Sugarland area, obviously. We're actually not too far from there. Uh, so what is your what is your coming into Houston? What's something? Because we're we're big foodies, as you can tell. We're, <laughs> and so, like, as you can tell, you know, funny, Carl, I, that, was, that was gonna be my next question. I was gonna oh, ask was you it? about food. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Houston, you know, Houston. For those that don't know, Houston is very food oriented. Was that? Uh, I need some recommendations. Oh, bro, we got you. We got you. Like straight up, we got you. We got you. Uh, okay. All right. So, what has been something that you know, you, you know, you, you that you have enjoyed here in Houston since you've been here? Like a different, like a food that you never would have imagined trying. That you just like this is this is this is my thing now. I'll tell you what, raisin canes is off the chart. I know, <laughs> like, oh, like, low I'm a, I'm like, that's way better than Chick Fil A. But I'd say seriously, what I really like is like the pho, the, the pho, oh, yeah, the pho, oh yeah, the, the Vietnamese faces in the soup and the oof. I love that for a good lunch, and then. I'm a foodie myself, I'll be honest yeah. with you. I like sushi, I like steak, I like uh I mean you name it, I I'm down to try it. I think I probably have kind of tried it to a certain extent. So I need some recommendations on where to go. Oh, it. we got you. Is there any particular food? All right, Reels and I go back and forth on this because he hates one of my takes. There's one food that I'm not a fan of, and it's like a curse to Houston. Uh, I am not a crawfish person. Man, I can't. Be I know everybody reacts the same way. I can't. <laughs> well, in his defense, he's from California, so he doesn't. We don't, we don't claim him. We don't claim him. We don't claim him. <laughs> I, I'm in on crawfish, first of all. Right? I can't. I don't know if I'm going out of my way to get crawfish necessarily, but if if we're like, hey, yeah. we're crawfish, I'm in there all day long. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See, every All time I say crawfish, I get, I was like, guys, it's just not my thing. And they, I get like, I just stab people in the heart or something when I say that to them. You, like, you do. Right, it's okay. an offense. As a uh, southerner, I'm offended. Our coach in AA, uh, Blue, our first base coach, is from Houston. And he's like, dude, you got to have crawfish. He's like, you got to have the crawfish. So I'm like, I was kind of was like, you're first. I love it. I don't know. He's like, no, no, no. We, we, uh, He's like, he's like, when we get to Houston, we're gonna make it happen. So I'm still waiting on that, but I'm, I got a little problem. Go. My point. For oh sure. yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, there's a lot of good places. Uh, do you uh like? So we got, you know, there's. I don't, uh, how are you? In, do you like tacos and stuff like that? Or well, no? Okay. I need a taco spot, a sushi yeah. spot, a steak spot, and uh, and a, a pho. I think I got the pho down. The pho down the yeah. Pho. Oh I, no, no, hold on. I'm. Uh, there's a there's some areas over here in the like Bel, the Bel Air area for those of you that are out of town, uh, Bel Air area here in uh, in Houston, Bel Air Boulevard area, not Bel Air Texas part. Uh, there's uh, there's so many places there, but we have a few like fun places that we kind of frequent there. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh yeah, little little Chinatown. That's where all like yeah. the good boss yeah. boss are, man. I got yeah. my way over. I got to make yeah. Up. Uh, taco places, yeah, we got we got a few of them on lock. Uh, one is uh, I think one close to uh, Minute Maid Park. Uh, one one that, that I really like, and it's not promotion to them; it's just because I really like it. 100% Taquito is a really good place to go. It's very uh, is it's the food is just delicious over there, and it's on like Greenway Plaza area, and so that one's a. 
Yeah. In and my opinion, the, the best taco spots are the ones in the hood. The, the, the food trucks on <laughs> the hood. In the hood, those are the best tacos. We're not, we're not trying to get. We're not trying to get. The taco trucks are the best. The ones where you're yeah. like, right, like there you go. They're, they're always legit, man. Yeah, man. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you up in some of those places and be like, hey, yeah, let's let's go try some uh some taco. Let's go try some fun. Say see if you <laughs> like them or whatnot. Yeah, hit, we're gonna hit you up. Watch. Um no, but for steak, taste of Texas. Oh, I went there once uh last year for my sister's birthday. Oh man, I was in heaven. Uh unreal, all right, unreal. Let's do it. Taste of Texas. I'll, I'll... Texas is a good one. Yeah, I uh the, is that that's one like 10, right, Riz? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over there by the uh, parking. Yeah, that's oh yeah, man, that was yeah. thinking about making my mouth water. It was it was that good. Yeah. Like, that by far is the best thing I've ever had. I love it. Yeah. Tell you, see, we it, it was like we go from baseball to food. <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking <laughs> about. All right, now let's talk about drinks. What uh are you uh do you like liquor or are you a beer person or not or not much? Really basically the tequila. I'll be honest, I don't drink too often. If we're if we're going out, I'll have some tequila, but I'm I'm not too much of a beer guy myself. I'll have a beer here and there maybe, but I'm not I'm not a crazy beer guy. Gotcha. That's funny. Yeah. Like, I don't drink I don't drink that much, but I drink tequila. Like <laughs> just all, all casually, like, oh just drink tequila, that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh some good a, a good tequila drink. I'm I'm always in for a really good margarita. Maybe the taco shop. Maybe the taco those two, yeah, yeah, man. You gotta have uh, what was it? You gotta have some tequila. Uh, you guys have some tequilas and margaritas, brother. Like that's 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 legit. It's a must. It's it's a it, you have to. Got to. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Oh man, this is this. Is, I like this food and beer, baseball. Like what else? That that's the most. That's the best things in life. That's it, no doubt. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me see. So cool. Big. You know, like you were saying, twenty twenty four. Like this is the year. This is the the year where. Hey, we're we're doing what we can. We're working on our mechanics. We're working, basically, to get to that next level. Um, how, like, meant you feel? You know, you you work you worked on your mechanics. You, you know, mentally, you're prepared because you you know you said earlier in the interview. Hey, you know, I've been in those playoff scenarios. So, you know, you're just basically awaiting the call, right? This season. So, I'm hoping this season for you. Literally, I'm just hoping oh, yeah. this season for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, man. Oh, yeah. uh, better and more consistent but we'll see we'll see what happens like you said like you said i've been there had some experiences and just gotta get better that's all keep getting better that's there all you, you go yeah how how is your have you have you uh, had much of a camaraderie with uh uh with uh, is, uh co- you, you know with coach espada now uh that's now the coach of the astros or 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 not much i think spring training will be really really big i okay. i I haven't been down there yet, so still trying to finish it up the off season. But I think when we all get to camp, we'll all, all get to meet him a little more and, and be around more. Obviously, me being on the minor league side last year did, didn't get a chance as much, right? Just because we're we're all, we're doing one thing sometimes when they're doing another, and so this this year is this year is going to be a good year to to meet him. And I, I'm excited. I'm super excited because I know he's a great guy. I've heard great things and. I look, I look forward to talk, meeting them down there. Um, I, I haven't really got a chance to talk to him yet. I look forward to it. I was, It'll be exciting, yeah, for sure. It'll be good. I think I, I think Carl's uh, screen is frozen. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, <laughs> I was like, man, he's being real serious. I'm like, it's not blinking. Wait a minute. Oh, he froze. <laughs> yeah, take a deal with you happen. So, um... Uh, so talk to me about your Tommy John. Like I've never been in person that's had Tommy John. So we're like, talk, why don't we do like the rehab process? Like, how does that go, man? Man, every day, just like you get surgery, they uh, they put a they retie a ligament on, kind of like as crazy as that sounds. They kind of just take the old one out, tie in a new one, and uh, you go through and uh, just start with basically trying to open up your arm, get full extension, full range of motion, and then you go through some strengthening and stuff. And it's a full year process. So one full year, um, and you start with the basics of, like, can you, like I said, literally straighten your arm out. And then once you do that, you kind of just hold different holds, and then you gradually do, like, a one-pound weight or something. And then you do, like, uh, two pounds, three pounds. And just like you go over any uh, injury, you kind of just progress, and uh, you incorporate your first, like, throw at, like, 20 feet. You just, like, lob it over there, and then it it just – 
over over a year, year and a half span progresses out to you being game ready again. And it's it's kind of a remarkable process, but they have it, you know, so many so many guys go through it these days. They have it down to such a T as far as they okay, accomplish this simple milestone here, this one here, and then you know that as long as you kind of stay on that track when it comes to your year, year and a half point, you did the joke. And then and, and there you go. And so that's kind of review that's the big that's that's the 30 that's the 30 second version of that <laughs> Dick, i remember as a kid you know growing up and whenever a picture would get tommy john like that would be like you know that'd be it for them all like like the acl interest used to be for like football and basketball but now right. it's like the advances in medicine is just you know 12 months you're good to go like yeah it's it's yeah and i mean there's a lot of hard work that goes into it like no doubt like every day uh you got probably did probably like an hour hour and a half of pt and uh, you worked with the physical therapist, and and thank you to I should say that thank you to all of them uh, with the Astros. Some are still there, some are not, but there was just a gr- group of you know coming off an injury when you're doing trying to do something at a high level is takes more than just you. People go in there and they they do soft tissue and they help you write a plan and help you stick to a plan, and so um, just cool. It's really, really, really awesome and appreciative of, of everyone else that, that helped me along with him. You got, you got, you got him over there. What, what's he got going on? Is he, is he finding his way back in? Yeah, it looks like his power went out. He's trying to come back in. <laughs> <laughs> Should have paid the bill. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, I, no, I just, I, I just asked because I tore my ACL, and it's, I know it, for me it was a long process trying to get you know back to a hundred percent. No doubt, and, and, it, and it's very similar. AC, ACL and in, in, in your elbow with Tommy John, like like that UCL is basically the ACL of your elbow, and so. Oh, okay. I mean that's that's like their comparison because it kind of keeps your elbow stabilized in place. And. Uh, hey, sorry guys, my uh, my for some reason my lights went out. <laughs> I paid the bill. I swear to God, I paid the bill. I went out over there. Uh huh. <laughs> he, he's running out of generator right now. <laughs> But my life, system. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, uh, that was so weird. Like I was, uh, I was, do- I was doing my question, and then suddenly, like the lights just started flickering here, and then just internet like when I was like, "What just happened?" And so no, Cole, like, Cole was, yeah, Cole was talking, and I'm like, "Man, Carl's just real serious. Like he has a movie." Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I just freeze. I'm like, wait. <laughs> Wow, he's really he's really freaking gay, uh, like paying attention to everything, yeah, which like, I never did because my ADD is laser, laser like <laughs> focus, and then like wait, no, the screen's froze. Like oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, that was yeah, that was weird. I don't know what. what no, we were just talking about uh, the you know the process of coming back from Tommy John, was, and he's compared oh, to like yeah. kind of like an AC like an ACL like injury because it's like you know the UCL is like the ACL of your elbow, like it stabilizes your elbow, and he's kind of go over the process and how you know how. You know, walk me through like the treatment. Cause I, I never met anyone that had you know Tommy John surgery before. Right. Yeah. Oh man. Like, like I was telling him, it just uh, I mean, really simply, just takes time, and 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 you the combination of someone helping you kind of straighten out your arm, massage it, doing exercises, and build days on top of days, and you get through a couple milestones. And <laughs> like I said, it sounded really simple. So I said again, one a year, <laughs> you're throwing a baseball again, and you're good to go. And, so- uh, so how do you so now, you know so that that's that you bring up an interesting point like it's how long did it take you a year and what a year and a half year and a half ish you know so still, how do you man how do you uh, go back to how do you go back from that dude like it's 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 in, uh, I can't like you because you can't throw the ball for like a year and a half obviously so it's like and you said sl- so slow buildups and then what else yeah. do you you basically don't throw baseball at all for the first uh, shoot maybe like ten months ish yeah. twelve months and then like. Your first throw, like I was, there's literally like a lob at like 20 feet. That, like that's day one, and then that little throw progresses over like five months is four or five months into like a pitch on the mound, and then you develop into your your pitch repertoire, right? Like fastball, yeah. curveball, cutter, slider, and then you get you work on that, and then they. You get cleared from there, and you're you're good to go just again. Go and, back, yeah, and just go not, back and. and sometimes it's not as smooth as that. Like you get a little hiccup, and where you're like, "Oh man, that didn't feel right," or "Oh, that's this happened," and maybe it's another month here, or, or maybe it's not just a week and part of the process. But you just kind of take everything, literally take everything one day at a time. Try to get better, and 
that's it. That's all you can do. And, and you know, you hope good things come from that. And most of the time it does. Honestly. Yeah. You know, what's funny when you say like one, uh, one day at a time, it's like, you hear that so much in sports, right? Like you hear like, that's like whenever, uh, uh, an athlete gets interviewed, like, you know, you take it a day at a time, but like it, it you know, as you say it, I'm like, you know how, how it sounds cliche, like it sounds cliche to the fan. But, yeah. It sounds like, but it's true, right? Like it's true. Yeah. It, it's, it sounds, not just not just sports, but like in life in general, yeah. it's anything you do, no, one day at a time. I think about right. So I, I know I'm going back to spring training soon. Yeah. Uh, like like I think I have 18 days. Is yeah, that's right. So like for the next 18 days here, like I'm trying to help help and my mom's having a couple things set up for the season, and one day at a time, just trying to knock out simple things like, hey, make sure this is painted or this was straightened out or whatever it is, and. uh one day at a time, man. All you can do is if I can knock one thing at a day at a time out yeah. uh, and, and make sure it's completed, that's all that's all you can do. And when you do good at that, a couple, yeah. hopefully a couple hundred days, maybe even a row, like I right. said, good, good things happen. I mean, yeah, no, for sure. Do you, um, so what do you like right now during that transitionary period of like, hey, it's the off season and you have spring training coming up? Like, what do you, what do you do to keep like, to keep it going, I guess, to keep your arm fresh or whatnot during this time, do you do like just regular exercises or do you just kind of go somewhere and just start throwing the ball around? Like, how do you, how do you maintain that? Yeah. You, you work out kind of throughout the whole off season as far mm -hmm. as weightlifting and running and stay in shape. And then yeah. you take a little bit of downtime of no throwing. So like let's say, and maybe I take a couple of weeks of just nothing, right. Let the body just like, recover because at the end of the day like in fairness to your body whether however you feel mentally like you went through a like i threw 128 innings this year okay or last year i should say yeah. so like two or three weeks off of nothing is probably like good because yeah. your body is just like okay relax recover feel good and then you start to work out a little bit and work out more and then you kind of like tj you play catch a little bit play catch a little more play catch a couple more days a week and then Started. I just had today was my third bullpen, for example. Uh -huh. so have another one on Monday, one more at the end of the next week, and then I report the 28th. And so, come the 20th, there are a couple of bullpens there, a lot throw to some live hitters, and then next thing you know, we're in the full ramp of spring training and then spring training games. And then you'll hone in on you know, feeling, feeling just being there and, and sharpening pitches and trying to get batters out. and Next thing you know, the season starts, and there you go. There you go. It goes by. It goes by quick, right? It goes <laughs> by quick, man. <laughs> man, no, no, exactly. All right, Colton. Like, uh, we're gonna end it up, but man, I, I, I want to thank you so much, even after my technical issues, uh, for <laughs> for hanging out with us, man. For 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 this much, you were, you know, you thank you for like just being so open with us, talking to us, no matter how ridiculous our questions sounded. Uh, you were on it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being such a such a great guest. No, man, I appreciate you guys having me on. Best, best of luck with the podcast. Awesome podcast, and and keep in touch, man. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, for sure. We for definitely sure, got to do the taco, the taco thing, and the uh, the yeah. fun places, bro. Steak night, steak night, steak night, steak night. But that's <laughs> awesome, yeah, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. We'll make it happen. Yeah, for sure. All right, yeah. uh, don't go, don't go just yet. I'm just gonna end the show. Uh, and that's the case, guys. Please follow uh, Colton Gordon on his uh, Instagram account to keep up with him. Uh, at Colton Gordon 10 uh, IG account. Uh, he's got some phenomenal stuff, and I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna keep watching your stories uh, during spring training or whatever. Uh, it's gonna, I'm sure it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah. wow. again, yeah, for sure. So please follow Colton Gordon at Colton Gordon 10. Uh, and for us, don't forget to, sorry, don't forget to spank that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. <laughs> we need us. Uh, wow, you, that's right. Spank it so hard you leave a mark. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> hit us up. We are trying to get to 500 subscribers uh, on our YouTube uh, account. We're trying to go for a thousand this year. So, hey, what better way to end 2024? I know I feel like I'm talking about the end of 2024 with a thousand subscribers for the Just Fans podcast, guys. So, please help us out again. Don't forget to spank that subscribe button. Do the hand motion, Reels. Wow, you're so. Why are, why are you so stiff, bro? Like <laughs> I, threw, I, threw, I threw up my back yesterday. So yeah. I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> he gets Tommy John from it. <laughs> 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 a long time, yeah.
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, Colin, don't go just yet, bro. Uh, let, and, you know, that's going to be it for us, guys. Thanks again. Uh, don't forget to check us out Saturday when we do our live reaction to the Texans versus Browns game, playoff game. Good. Let's go, Texans. Let's go, Astros. Let's go, Colton Gordon. Big season for you this year, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. For real. Not a, not a problem. Not a problem. All right, guys. That's going to be it. See you later. Peace. And I don't know what you thought, but right here, dog, we gon' rap the squad. Got HU, you might fit it, then I'm my jersey. You gon' know where I'm from. This Houston, Texas, still rolling heavy, stay rapping.